What if, and this does happen a lot, you copy all of the massive long list of email addresses, you whack them into Excel, and they all land in a single cell like that. What a mess. How are you going to deal with that? Hi, I'm John, a qualified accountant with 25 years real world Excel experience. And if you want to save time and get better Excel results faster, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Now, I've got two examples here of how you deal with it. One is how you deal with it right now. You've got Excel 365, modern Excel, highly recommended. And the second is a bit of a legacy workaround. You don't have that. Because if you have modern Excel, you have the text split function. And this is ideal because you can just say, well, I'm just going to break that list up into multiple cells. So that's the text. Remember, everything is in that cell, even though it looks like it's spread across. What's my delimiter? Well, it's the semicolon. I can ignore all the other arguments. So that has split everything out into separate cells. And if I just widen this so you can see what it's done, you've got a single email address in that cell and then another one in that one, another one in that one, etc. But they're all in columns, so it's not ideal. It's not exactly as before. So I want to change that into a list. So I'm going to embed that in the transpose function. And when I hit enter on that, we get now a spilled down list of all our email addresses. And there's only one slight issue, and I don't know if you can see it on screen, um, but we've got a slight indent on all except the first address. And the reason for that is because there's a space after each semicolon. And that's easily dealt with. We can just change that, put a space after there, hit enter, and that completely corrects that situation. So we're pretty much back to like a big long list of email addresses. We're now dealing with a spilled array rather than a like a traditional sort of list in Excel. So I can't turn it into a table, but I can still run all my formulas on it. And there's some formula shortcuts we can use because we're dealing with a spilled array. So I'd just like um, allude to those in a minute. So for example, if I wanted to um, work out where the uh, email address started with the triangle, um, I could put my find uh, formula in as before, like that. And where it comes to say within text, if I click on that, if I now put a hash sign on the end, it tells Excel that I want this to apply to the entire spilled array. And so when I close the brackets and hit enter, it then spills that formula all the way down the column. And so I don't need to worry about if I put in a new list in there, and this is slightly longer or shorter, this will pick up the correct length. I don't need to drag the formulas down or whatever. So all of that, if you've got Excel 365, you're well away. Okay, what if you don't have Excel 365? Well, you're gonna need to use a couple of legacy techniques. So the first one is text columns. So, this is the same data part in there. If I go to the data menu, you'll see there's a function called text to columns. And when you click on that, you'll get a bit of a wizard come up. And it allows you to split basically pieces of text into various columns. So if we say delimited and we use the semicolon, you can see, you know, where it's putting the lines, it's going to break out all those email addresses. So I can just hit finish. And it's effectively done pretty much what the formula did, but it's done it in a kind of manual way, really. So it's not repeatable. So next time you're gonna to have to do it, you know, it's not automated. And not only that, it's not transposed it. So I'm gonna to have to highlight all of that, it's control shift and the arrow right, copy it, and then I'm gonna paste it, paste special, transpose to get my list. And it's not a spilled array, it's just a normal sort of um, list. So I could turn it into a table if I wanted to, but of course we've got this slight issue now with the space. And to so say a new function that I'll just tell you about is the trim function. So I could use the trim function, which will remove sort of trailing and leaving spaces and uh, things from text. So we'll do that like that. 
And if I double click to paste that down, I'll just uh, make that wider. You can see now that I've got a nice clean list. Remember, if you want to get your hands on my 33 fantastic functions for Excel cheat sheet, then there's a link in the description. We basically list all of the functions, their category, what they do, typical use cases that I use these functions for, functions that you can learn that are in the same family, how useful I think they are and how complex I think they are. But as a bonus, you also get every single Excel function listed in here. You can sort it, filter it. You've got Microsoft's own description of that function. And I've got on here whether I think um, it's useful, essential or optional. Click the link in the description if you want to get your hands on this. Um, hopefully you'll find it really, really useful. It'll save you loads of time because, you know, with these 33 functions, you can do pretty much anything you ever would want to do in Excel. And it's just going to save you a whole load of learning time. That's it for this video, but there's so much more on the Up for Excel YouTube channel to get you better Excel results faster. So go and have a look, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and tell me in the comments what you want to see me talking about. I want to focus on saving time in Excel, getting you better results faster. So tell me what you want. I'll listen to it. I'll give me some great ideas for new videos in the future. See you soon.